In recent months, the security situation in Anambra State has been a major cause for concern, leading to calls for the postponement of the governorship poll in the state, scheduled to take place on Saturday, November 6th. In order to forestall the postponement of the election, the Nigeria Police Force and other security agencies have beefed up security in Anambra to ensure that the polls hold in a peaceful atmosphere. In recent weeks, they have also gone after and subdued criminal suspects likely to foment trouble in the state. One setback that was meant to cripple the election was a sit-at-home order issued by the secessionist group, the indigenous people of Biafra. But the people of Anambra and the 18 governorship candidates expected to participate in the election can perhaps breathe a sigh of relief now that the order has been lifted by IPOB. This notwithstanding, the police and other security agencies cannot afford to be complacent and will have to be on the lookout for troublemakers who might want to disrupt the electoral process. Now joining us from Oka to discuss the security arrangements that have been put in place for the election is Aderemi Adirio, Deputy Commissioner of Police and Amber State Police Command. Welcome to the show, Mr. Adirio, and good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Adeoyo, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. First, uh, are you excited by the fact that uh, IPOP, Indigenous Peoples uh, of Biafra Organization, that had said that it was going to lock down the entire Southeast uh, from November 5 to November 10, has now done uh, a vote for us, a U-turn, and said, look, there will be no more sit at home order. And uh, even IPOP is now... Uh, joining the police and INEC uh, to mobilize their voters. Does that come as a kind of relief? And how prepared uh, is the police, you know, uh, in uh, Anambra? Uh, all the uh, 34,000 plus uh, personnel already on the ground, the 38 police commissioners. And can you give us any assurance that all will go well in terms of uh, security arrangements tomorrow? Uh, to answer your question, no, I am not excited. To be excited is to get carried away. And getting carried away is to let down our guards. The fact of the matter is that IPOB has created a monster it has no control over. And that is the Eastern Security Network. Having said that, I want to mention that calling off the initial seat at home order is in the interest of the people. It is the logical thing to do. That seat at home order ought not to have been issued in the first place. It is ill-conceived and illogical. And as such, calling off the sit-at-home order will not make us to take anything for granted. We know there are pockets of people out there who act outside whatever IPOB dictates. We have seen in the past how miscreants who claim to be enforcing IPOP sit at home order have killed people, have burnt vehicles, have tried to cause mayhem. And as such, this time around, we will ensure that such miscreants who want to act of their own volition are properly taken care of. I want to assure the good people of Anambra State I, that the police is on ground working with other sister security agencies to provide total security against the antics of miscreants who might want to seek on due relevance. We are fully deployed. 
Each area command is headed by a commissioner of police. Each local government is headed by a deputy commissioner of police. Each senatorial district is headed by an assistant inspector general of police. The deputy inspector general of police who is leading the election is on ground. The assistant inspector general of operation, I mean the DIG operations is on ground. The assistant inspector general in charge of police mobile force is on ground. All assets are in place. The joint operation room has been activated. Commanding officers of the mobile force across the country have been fully mobilized and they are in town with their gun trucks across the states. Total security is guaranteed and we pledge to work to serve the good people of Anambra State and ensure they elect a candidate of their choice without any manipulation, without any coercion, in a free and fair atmosphere to produce a credible poll. Uh, thank I, you. Thank you, Mr. Adirye. So far, so reassuring from what you've said. But there have always been concerns in this country at every election about over-militarization and about the rules of engagement. Can you take us through the rules of engagement that will be deployed during the elections? And what can people expect from the police in terms of presence, in terms of procedure, when they arrive at their various polling stations tomorrow? Uh, in the first place, I want to say that the issue of over-militarization does not arise. You will agree that the situation in Anambra State at this time is peculiar. And as such, security has to be guaranteed to the people. Having said that, I want to mention that the rules of engagement are clear. At the polling booth, you will not find any weapon. All the police officers and members of sister security agencies who are deployed for uh, this exercise will not be armed. That is the inner uh, perimeter where you have the polling booth. As to the process and procedure for voting, INEC has done enough sensitization and provided enough educating materials to guide the electorate. Uh, my focus is on security. Outside the inner perimeter where you have unarmed policemen, you will have armed police mobile force and counter-terrorist operatives. Not only are they fully trained, they are fully equipped to ensure that they can repel any assailant. Outside that immediate perimeter, we have fully equipped units in armored personnel carriers and gun trucks who will patrol the vicinity and the entire environment in each town and village. They are fully motivated to take on any challenge and to ensure that no armed person comes near the electorate, either on their way to the polling booth, at the polling booth, and on their way home from the polling booth. 
There will be area surveillance by helicopters, which will communicate real time with the joint ops room. And the joint ops room will offer coordination between the forces on ground and the various service headquarters to ensure absolute synergy, collaboration, and joint action. Outside these fully equipped and armed unit patrolling the cities will be the military manning checkpoints and also patrolling to ensure there is no infiltration into the state from any other state by armed insurgents or hoodlums. The military will also be on hand to support the police if there is any engagement with hoodlums. The Department of State Services continue to gather intelligence and they feed the action agencies real time with intelligence that is actionable. This collaboration we see to it that the security atmosphere in Anambra State remains conducive and the people can exercise their franchise without fear or favor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, real quickly, we hear that movement will cease us from Friday night. Uh, what, what's the modus operandi around that? How will that affect the movement of you know, the voters? And you said all of this, you know, all of this high intensity security apparatus you've deployed. Uh, a lot of people are saying, hope this will not lead to the intimidation of the voters. What do you have to say to an average in the number of voter that is coming out tomorrow? Well, maybe before Mr. Adeoye answers that question, Mr. Adeoye, just before you answer, we take a short break and then we'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. We still have uh, Adeoye Adeoye, Deputy Commissioner of Police, Anambra State Police Command. And I did ask some questions before. I said that with all of this, hope people will not be intimidated. And no movement starts from Friday night. How is it going to be easy for the electorates to move around? Thirdly, there are unconfirmed reports of four police officers killed yesterday. Uh, what's your take on that report? Um, thank you very much. I will, take, I will take your questions in sequence. First, on the restriction of movement. This is necessary to protect the sanctity of the electoral process. Since people are supposed to vote in their neighborhood, they do not really require long distance travels that would warrant using vehicles. However, um, all organizations on essential duty are exempted from the restriction. These include the fourth estate of the REM, the journalists, uh, medical workers of all descriptions who are on essential duty and not those who are not on duty. The restriction also does not apply to the fire service or any of the security services. Uh, so we think the restriction will not have any negative impact. Indeed, it will help to facilitate a credible and fair polls. On the issue of uh, uh, the electorate being traumatized, our men have been fully lectured. 
they actually have no basis for interaction with the electorate on their way to and from the polling booths. There will be no harassment of any kind and any untoward behavior will be swiftly and severely punished. So we are sure the electorate, they have nothing to fear from security. We are here because of them and we are here in their interest. Our purpose is to ensure that they can exercise their right without intimidation. Well, uh... On the issue of killing of four policemen, it is a wicked exaggeration. Indeed, one of our stations was attacked and we lost, a, we lost two personnel. Those two personnel that were killed died as heroes. Armed with AK-47 rifles, they withstood a gang that was armed with rocket-propelled grenade launchers. And still, they inflict heavy damage on the insurgents. We saw their brain matter splattered on the ground. We saw blood trail from where they dragged their members that were killed from the bushes to their waiting cars before they sped off. I have video recording of this. So those two who died paid the supreme sacrifice. They paid the supreme price to safeguard the good people of Anambra State. And the Inspector General of Police in his magnanimity has awarded posthumous award to these gallant heroes. We are proud of them. And we intend to emulate them. If we take our life to ensure peace, we are ready to lay down our lives. In doing so, the insurgents we know, they met with a force. We shall never surrender. We shall never be intimidated. We shall overcome them. And we shall guarantee peace in this country. Well, our, commis Thank you. our commiserations on the death of two of your officers. May their souls rest in peace. Now, very quickly, what is the level? Amen. Thank you. What is the level or quality of coordination uh, between the police and the other security agencies that are on the ground? I understand that there was an interagency security uh, committee, but now D Day is tomorrow, and the INEC officials often talk about a concentric circle of uh, security at uh, polling boards. Now, what's the level of synergy uh, between the police, the uh, military, and also uh, the Department of State Security, uh, the three major units that will be on the ground? Can you give us an idea? And what level of conscientization have you done to ensure that your officers manning the polling booths do not become uh, agents for the collection of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, bribes for promoting corruption? Uh, first and foremost, to talk on the synergy uh, between the security agencies, I have mentioned this in a, press show, in a previous briefing, that the synergy is unprecedented. Uh, we meet regularly at the highest command levels and the input from the various services have been superb, excellent, first grade, top notch. And that is why you have seen a dramatic turnaround in the security situation in the state. The meetings are regular. Consultation is ever ongoing. Joint operations is never ceasing. And like I mentioned earlier, we have established a joint ops room 
where all the services will be seated today. And they will function till Monday morning. On the other hand, you ask about the presence of our men at polling booths, and you want to know how they will not be agents of uh, corruption. Every police officer, men and women out there, going to the polling booths, they know without an iota of doubt that any mischievous act of misconduct will be punished swiftly. The federal government, through the Inspector General of Police, have paid all of them their allowances up front. I received my own yesterday morning through my bank account. So no police officer has any reason to accept gratification from any party. I can tell you that overtures have been made to me and I rejected all the overtures. I have no business with any political party other than providing security. It is the same stance my commissioner champions. And we expect all our men to follow suit. I can assure you of high standard of ethical behavior. The electorate have nothing to worry about. We shall not compromise. Well, on that. Thank you. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News.